بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله تعالى وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد Respected brothers and sisters, I hope you have had a wonderful Ramadan so far. I hope that the month has been a means of blessing and a means of mercy, both mercy upon you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also expression of mercy from yourselves onto others, inshaAllah ta'ala. As you know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يرحم الله من لا يرحم الناس Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have mercy upon anybody who does not have mercy upon people. الرحمون يرحمهم الرحمن يرحموا من في الأرض يرحمكم من في السماء That uh, the people of mercy, um, Allah, the Rahman, has mercy upon them. Have mercy upon the people of the, of the earth and the one in the heavens will have mercy upon you. And I hope after the discussion that we had in the first uh, episode of this uh, series that you've managed to bring your family together inshallah ta'ala share your Ramadan and share the mercy of uh, of Ramadan and share the compassion of Ramadan and share the blessing of Ramadan with everybody around you uh, the your Muslim your, your Muslim neighbors your non-Muslim neighbors the people in the masjid the homeless the poor people back home who need your help I hope that the children children have participated in this inshallah and I hope that that, that Ramadan has been a month of, of, of immense worship, of improvement of worship. And remember, when, when you increase, you know, if you've increased your worship in the month of Ramadan, and you should have done by now, then don't feel inadequate. Don't feel like, you know, um, I'm worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extra in the month of Ramadan, but I didn't do it before Ramadan. You know, I'm a hypocrite. I'm, I, I'm, I'm one way outside of Ramadan, and now suddenly I'm really good inside Ramadan. No, brothers and sisters, this is what is expected. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offers us his generosity so that we can take it up. This is a time of bonus, right? It's a time of bonus. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offers it so that we get encouraged to do more. So this is exactly what's expected, right? So, so that's not a problem at all. But what happens now, right? We're, we, you know, we've progressed into Ramadan. Right, we're starting to see the end of Ramadan. Right, you know we're we're now in this period. We're moving towards an even higher kind of boost as we go into the last ten days and we do the worship of the last ten days. Some people in i'tikaf, some people doing doing both the taraweeh and the tahajjud in the masjid. Some people do, doing their own tahajjud at home. Um, you know, people are coming towards the end of a khatam of the Quran. Maybe they want to do another one. They've built, they've created new habits in Ramadan. We didn't do a lot of dhikr outside, but now we're doing it because we're going to Fajr. And after Fajr, we sit down and we do some extra adhkar. All these great things, mashallah, tabarakallah, it's all happening, right? Um, you know, we've shared our food. We've shared the barakah. Um, inshallah, hopefully, we've all taken the advice on board and our children have been involved. Right, you know, they've been participating, participating in Ramadan activities. They've helped with the shopping. They've helped with the uh, with the preparation of the food. They've uh, they come to the masjid for taraweeh. They go to the masjid for 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 the the the, the salahs that are that are um, that they're not uh, that that they're not in school for. And of course, this Ramadan for two whole weeks they're not at school because the Easter holidays is in the month of uh, the month of Ramadan, right? So there is no excuse, you know. We should, fathers, if you're at home, take, the, take your uh, sons with you to the masjid. Take your daughters if there's women's facilities. Uh, and mothers, you know, if, if, if their father isn't at home to take them, you send them out to the masjid. Most of us in all over the country, right? You know, we have masajid, alhamdulillah. Uh, we've, we've all worked very hard and our elders have worked hard to ensure that there are masajid everywhere. Send the children to the masjid, right? If it's a bit far, put them on a bike. You know what? Buy them a bike so that they can go to the masjid in Ramadan. You know, you don't have you don't have a car. The father's not at home. Get them to buy a bike and learn how to ride so that in Ramadan they can go to the masjid every day. This is called this is called taking preparation, right? So anyway, so we've, we're coming now. You know, these days of blessing and mercy are concluding. This this great, you know, table, right? This table upon which we've we've been feasting upon hasanat we've been feasting upon uh, upon worship and ibadah and spiritual fulfillment and spiritual growth it's now coming to an end these blessed days are coming to an end right what happens now so now is the time 
I spoke in the first episode about preparing for Ramadan as we go into it. Now is the time to start thinking about the exit, right? The exit strategy. As Ramadan comes to a conclusion, what is next for us, right? And there's a really strong warning here for everybody, which is that generally ulama say um, that the evidence of acceptance, and remember brothers and sisters, whenever we do something good, right? How well we have done it, how well we have done it, how much we have done, and how much impact it has had, all of this is less important than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's acceptance of it. Somebody's millions of, somebody's million pound donation, right, is not the same as another person's 10 pound donation. If one is not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the other is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look, let's not have any doubts about this. Your million pounds will be accepted by the poor. It will be accepted by the charity that you've donated to. Right? And the other person, 10 pounds, will be accepted by the charity that they donated to. Right? But will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it? Two people will go for taraweeh. Two people will fast a month of Ramadan. Right? Which one is accepted? You've both done the act. You've done the deed. You've done the taraweeh. You've done the fast. You've done the qiyamul layl. You've done the Quran tilawa. Which one is being accepted? That depends on the state of our hearts, brothers and sisters. And if the state of our hearts... Right? isn't something we've paid attention to, then it's not too late. We are in Ramadan. Take some time. Take a few days off. Create some space away from the rush of the world, away from the, your busy schedules, and start reflecting and meditating on the state of our hearts. Right? What is the state of my intention? Why is it that I fasted 20 days? Is it purely so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with me? Is it so that I can turn to Allah and I can make tawbah for my major sins? I can show regret and remorse for the sins I have committed. I can show regret for the fact that I have not been as grateful as I should be for all of the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me, the blessing of life, the blessing of my eyes, the blessing of my ears, the blessing of my heart, the blessing of my beating heart, the blessing of the blood rushing through my veins, the blessing of breath, the blessing of a functioning brain. And even if I have sicknesses and illness, etc., just the blessing of being alive and being able to experience life, even being able to experience the difficulties of life, right, is still a blessing because the alternative is nothing. The alternative is to not exist. All of these blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us, the blessing of family, the blessing of children, the blessing of parents, nobody's played, paid anything for this. We haven't done anything for any of this, brothers and sisters. But yet, we fall short of our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases when there is gratitude. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Ala kulli sulama ibn Adam, Every day the sun rises, there is a sadaqah due on every joint of the son of Adam, right? And obviously the Sahaba expressed concern that how are we going to find so much sadaqah? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi teaches them, you know, your gratitude, your, your subh, every subhanallah is a sadaqah. You know, every alhamdulillah is a sadaqah. Every la ilaha illallah is a sadaqah. A smile is a sadaqah. To put food in the, to, to put food in the mouth to raise a morsel of food into the mouth of your wife is a sadaqah. The Prophet ﷺ, he broadens the idea of, the, of sadaqah so that it is universal. The rich can do it, the poor can do it, the strong can do it, the weak can do it, everybody can do it. You know, there is sadaqah just there on, on the tips of our tongues. These basic acts of gratitude we have not been able to do. Have I come into Ramadan in my meditation? As I think, have I come into Ramadan? Am I expressing that? Is my heart in the right place? Am I, am I doing the worship of Ramadan because everybody else is doing it? That's it. Everybody's doing it. I'm going along with the vibe, right? Or is there, is there a more sincere, a better, a stronger intention, right? So reflect on this, right? And now that you've done some, you know, you've done something, you've fasted, I don't know, however many days it has been. You've, you've, you've done tahajjud for however many days. You've done taraweeh for however many days. You've given some charity. You've given your zakah. You've given some extra sadaqah. Who is going to accept all of that? You 
the poor or is it going to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If it's going to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then brothers and sisters, please beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for acceptance. Beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for acceptance. Now is the time to beg Allah to accept what we have done so far, right? And beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept the remainder that we are going to do. Coming back to my original point, the ulama say that the sign of acceptance of the month of Ramadan, of everything we've done in the month of Ramadan, is that after Ramadan we show improvement. After Ramadan we show that we truly value, we truly value fasting. We truly value going to the masjid for salah. We truly value recitation of the Quran. And there is some, con there is continuity, some continuity. Look, the pro there, it is not expected of us to maintain the same level as Ramadan. Because sometimes you might think, how am I going to maintain the same level? Right? In Ramadan, I've been doing all of this worship. I've read so much Quran. I've been doing Taraweeh every single night. I've been fasting every single day. You know, I've done extra tahajjud. I've done all, all this extra, extra charity. How am I going to maintain that after Ramadan? That's too high a level. That's not expected of you, brothers and sisters. The, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't expect that of us. And I'll tell you, you know, a, a beautiful story, right? There's a sahabi called Hanzala, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who uh, once met Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, on the, on the street, right? And he wailed and, you know, he, 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 he complained to Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, Nafaqa Hanzala, Nafaqa Hanzala. Hanzala has become a hypocrite. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said to him, how, how? Like, why are you saying this? So Hanzala radiallahu anhu explained that when, I'm in, when we are in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and we're listening to the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, it is as though we can see Jannah and Jahannam. We are so spiritually elevated that it's as though we can see with our own eyes, we can see Jannah and Jahannam. It, that's, that is how powerful you know, our spirituality is when we are with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when we are in his presence. Then when we leave him, we don't have that level anymore. It all dips, right? It all dips and all of a sudden we're different when we're with our families. We're different when we're in the marking place. We're different when we're on the streets, right? So Handal radiallahu anhu expresses this concern. Uh, I'm not word for word giving you the hadith. I'm giving you the kind of the story of the hadith. So he says, look, you know, we're one way before the Prophet Sallallahu and we're different outside. This is hypocrisy. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, well, it's the same for me. I feel the same way, you know, I, I, now I'm concerned. So they both go to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they, they, they express this concern. Hanzal radiallahu anhu says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, you know, I, I feel like I'm a hypocrite. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam listens to them and he says, he says, Andala, you know, like there's a time for that, that, that time of elevated spirituality, spirituality and, and then there's other times, right? Um, and he said, he said that if you could maintain the level of spirituality you have with me, right, all the time, then angels would come and shake your hands on the streets and in your rooms on your beds. When you're, when, you're, when you're sitting on your beds, they would shake your hands. When you're out on the streets, they would be shaking your hands. Angels. That is how so, you'd be spiritually so elevated, right, that you would be able to experience the angels coming and shaking your hands. But, but that's not possible, right? That's not normally possible. So there is a time for the elevated status and there are times when it will would it, when it will uh, reduce, right? So in Ramadan, we have this elevated status of spirituality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us all of these advantages. The shayateen are locked away and, you know, the environment is with us and everybody's going along together and there is this vibe. Outside Ramadan, we won't maintain that same, same level. But, but, brothers and sisters, there has to be some increase from before Ramadan. From how we were before Ramadan, there has to be some increase. Because if there is increase, then it shows that we value ibadah. We think ibadah is good and important, right? We value sadaqah. We value giving to, to the poor. We value uh, worshipping at night. We value fasting during the day, right? And immediately the Prophet ﷺ encourages us to follow up by saying, 
anybody who fasts six fasts in the month of Shawwal, uh, uh, then uh, then keeping those fasts will, it will be like fasting for the whole year. It's like you've continuously fasts, fasted. So immediately the Prophet is already encouraging continuity. So again, just like you prepared for Ramadan before Ramadan, yourselves as you know as fathers and mothers, as individuals, right? As sons and daughters, as families, you, th you, know, you thought about how we're going to prepare for Ramadan. Now, plan your continuity. What will you continue? What aspect of your five daily salah will you continue? Right? And if you haven't been praying before, and you started praying in the month of Ramadan, then as a minimum, your five times salah should continue. Take that inspiration, whatever it is, whatever thinking you have to do, whatever advice you have to take, whatever reading you have to do, do it. Don't allow any more days without performing your five times salah. If you've been performing your five times salah at home, then consider doing it at home with your family in jama'ah, if the masjid is too far, right? And if the masjid is nearby, then consider showing some improvement by going to the masjid for the five times salah. And if you go, can't go for five times salah because you're at work, because you have other busy, you're, you're busy, then try to try to go for fajr and for isha. Person who you know because fajr is before work, isha is after work. Person who does fajr in the masjid, isha in the masjid, gets the reward of the of worshiping the whole night. Right? Subhanallah. Gets the reward for worshiping the whole night. So try to do that. And don't you think your children will see that? Your children will see that. They, your siblings will see that, right? And they will be inspired by it. When you're at work, when you go out for lunch, you know, seek out a masjid and go pray there. Or seek out the prayer room at university. Or seek out the prayer room at work, right? Or get together as Muslim brothers, right? And sisters, right? And organize your own jama'ah. Make these improvements, brothers and sisters. If you, were, if you weren't reading much Quran before, right? And you found the inspiration to recite Quran then do two things. Number one, check with a good reciter how good your recitation is, right? Take their feedback and start improving your Quran because the Quran, when it is recited, it should be recited well. This is necessary. It should be recited well. So take feedback on your Quran and start improving. Make an objective to start improving, okay? You know, seek some knowledge, raise the level of knowledge, especially the knowledge of the rules of Islam so that you're not making mistakes in your salah, you are not making mistakes in your, uh, in your ibadah, you are not ma making mistakes in your understanding of halal and haram. All right, learn these things. Make resolutions for after Ramadan. What continuity will you show, brothers and sisters? You know, um, make a resolution for what you will do to involve your children. So some resolutions are for you. They're for me, right? They're for mum, dad. They're for you as individuals. But some things have to come together and you need to make a plan as a family. If you are, if you are thinking as a father, and I, I have seen this so many times. Father becomes religious, goes Hajj, goes Umrah. After one Ramadan, father becomes religious and then decides that that's it, I'm going to make the whole family religious. Even though for 15 years, for 20 years, he hasn't done this. And suddenly... The, children, the, the wife is being told off for not praying on time, for not getting up for fajr. The children are being told off for spending too much time in front of the television, for looking at their phones too much. You haven't complained about it for, five, for, la for the last two years, three years, five years, ten years, fifteen years. Suddenly, you want everybody to become religious, right? Because you've become religious. And then the whole family starts to feel this pressure instead of feeling inspiration. So instead of doing it like that, work with them. If you've, if you've made some resolutions, ask them what theirs are. Ask them, have you made some intentions of change after Ramadan? And then think about how you can do it together. Think about how you can help one another. Maybe you have three children. Maybe, maybe one, on one day, one of them will, will use their alarm to be the first to wake up for Fajr. And then on another day, it will be them. Of course, you will have your alarm set all the time, but get them involved. Get them involved. You know what, Muhammad, on Monday, it's your responsibility to wake everybody else up for Fajr, right? On Tuesday, you know, Zainab, it's your responsibility to wake everybody up for Fajr, and, and so on. Make some plans, brothers and sisters, for how you're going to provide continuity after Ramadan. Do it as individuals, do it together as a family. 
Continuity is a sign of acceptance. Some sort of, not the same level, like I said. Don't beat yourself up, up if you can't maintain the same level. That is not expected. Some continuity, some improvement from, from how things were before Ramadan. That is a sign of acceptance. That is a sign that my Ramadan is accepted. If we cannot, if we cannot provide some continuity, we should be worried that what if my Ramadan is not accepted. Beg Allah for acceptance and prove that that is what you want by showing some continuity after the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to make the most out of the remaining days. The last stretch, the last stretch requires a sprint. Get ready for that sprint. The last stretch requires an extra boost. Okay? And you will have the energy. You just need to have the will and the desire. Right? So do that extra bit, inshallah ta'ala, for the last 10 days. You know, uh, if it's still like, you know, the holiday time and so on, try to get the children to push during the holiday and, sh and tell them that if you can't do it during, after the holidays because of school, then what you've done in the holiday is what you'll be rewarded for over there. Because had it not been school, then you would have done more. So try to work it in that way. But that last trip requires the extra boost. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq to find that energy, to find that inspiration, to make the most out of the, out of the rema remaining days of Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us acceptance from him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us proof of acceptance by enabling us to take inspiration and the power of Ramadan forward and show improvement outside of Ramadan. Inshallah ta'ala, jazakum la khairan. Uh, please also make dua for me. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. And may the, the rest of the year be a good one, inshallah ta'ala, one of closeness to Allah, one of spirituality and ibadah, so that then when the next Ramadan comes along, we're a little bit better. You know, we're a bit better than we were the previous Ramadan. Life is a journey of growth, of improvement, right? Of getting closer and closer and closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we age and as we get older, it's about preparation for Jannah. It's about preparation for death. Only a fool gets older and doesn't prepare for death. And therefore, an intelligent man improves every year. An intelligent man gets more concerned about the, the certainty of death. All right, and the shortness of life. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, preserve us. May Allah give us uh, death with iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise us with the mu'mineen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the same for all of our children. Jazakum khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.